Whānau ora our come tuakiritanga. What is tuakiritanga to you? What is tuakiritanga to your whānau? And... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cultural identity to me is whakapapa genealogy. So, uh, knowing where I come from, uh, my, my iwi, hapu, where, where my family was from, and where if I have kids one day, where I can take my kids back to. Somewhere mm -hmm. where they feel a sense of belonging. When our nephew Raniera was born, um, so my sister and her husband sent their son to Mama Tamariki. Um, and that's kind of where it all started, eh? Mm -hmm. Pretty much because you had to commit to speaking Te Reo Māori to your child. And so um, it kind of accelerated that learning process or having to commit to it because I've got to speak only Te Reo Māori to my nephew. Mm. And then just reserving just like um, the dining table um, was that, you know, at that space you got to only speak Māori, regardless of who you are, okay. visitors. It was just on that, I remember going to, because that was kind of around the same time where I kind of had a switch, like, ah, I, don't, I didn't even speak Māori to anybody other than my Māori teachers. And now I have to speak Māori to him, I have to engage in this space. So no matter who it was, that was the tūri. Yeah. And then eventually it went from the dining table to just a normal thing, normal practice. It was there where I thought, ah, um, I'd like this if we were to have kids, which you got, you know, I'd like this for our kids. But it was like, far out. Um, I'd never been in a Māori, just Māori speaking house before in my whole life. Well, actually, um, it was Tegan and Utsu, kind of, because, you know, when you first had your kids, then you'd speak Māori to them, so, you know, trying to have a conversation with them, <laughs> it's a bit hard, so, it's uh, one of the one of the reasons why, you know, I started a real journey, but then also my niece was, um, her two parents, they um, said that they only could speak Māori to her, so, and living with them, I had to, you know, try and converse in the conversation with her, so she was able to understand me. So that was one of the main reasons why I started on that ideal journey, so, yeah. Looking back and having kids of my own now mm. and seeing them, you know, our baby can't really even talk, but he can sing all of our songs, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he can haka and, you know, so it's seeing that and now being in the ranks with my nieces and nephews, you know, and knowing one day that's going to be my kids, uh, my niece, that name, with us, and just providing them um, with knowledge that we're learning now as adults, but for them it's just going to be normal, you know, mm -hmm. knowing from a Māori perspective how we come to be, you know, navigating grief and death and, you know, understanding that it's, it's okay to grieve, you know, you've got poor one ao and these are the stages of you know, life and these are the stages of death and it's, it's okay, we're, we're going to be okay regardless, you know, because our, our little tukui will say so. I'm of course, since we're just talking one morning and um, I'm of course goes, oh, which kohanga did you go to? Um, Gagui? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to kohanga. I said, kauri ya mate te kohanga, moko. And she goes, she looked at me strange and said, eh? And she couldn't believe me. She just couldn't believe me that we didn't have kōnga at all. So, so it's just natural for them. 